Okay, so let's go back to where we was um, last stream. Goes back to our world building list. Let's zoom in. Okay, just as a catch up then for anyone. What's this? Now you've got to turn that to life. I'll go away. How dare you interrupt? There we go. <laughs> Errors interrupting our fun stream. There we go. So, um, as a catch up for anyone who's popping in, curious what we've been up to. We've been doing a bit of world building the last few streams and we're going to be doing that for a bit longer while I do some game dev stuff off stream. Um, it's a few bits that I'm working on. So we're doing this on stream for a while. Um, it's been a long time coming. It's been World building has been something that needed to have a bit more attention considering this is a law heavy game. That is the plan anyway. And um, we have started, we started like with the months, the structure of uh, the years and calendar. We came up with some really cool festival ideas. We still have the polls in um, the Discord. So they're still free to vote on. I'm going to pull that in in the chat for you guys you've got to be part of the discord to vote on these um there they are some of them they're going to stay up for a while because we're kind of putting the festival and holidays on the back burner for a bit while we focus on some of the other um aspects of world building but it's all going to link in together and we're going to come back to this very likely soon um, and we're gonna like actively start adding stuff to our calendar, which we have here on our law bible, which I have made a page for. But before we like do that, we're gonna focus on the next thing, which is this. Um, I've been saying for a few streams now, but I've wanted to have a Pantheon stream. Um, so that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get started today, and we probably will have. Um, a couple of streams on this one because I doubt we'll get everything down and decided in a single stream for something this big. Um, so maybe both streams this week we can focus on this and we'll see how it goes. We're going to start easy. I've got a little plan, I've got a structure for this so um, we'll, we'll, it's going to be fun but there's definitely going to be things that we can talk about together and decide together it's gonna be fun okay so um have a few tabs open i don't think you can see them now uh, okay so where are we gonna begin then i'm thinking of making a google sheet for this pantheon thing i think it's gonna be a lot easier um to get tables and rows up for something like this considering we're going to be talking about multiple people here and listing things about them it's going to be the plan um, but before we jump into that and start writing bits down on that um, I just want to do a quick catch up on the very last stream because some of you might remember um, we were working on a timeline of the whole history of the entire world um, since creation from pre to present day it was pretty pretty big pretty big one and it was super fun and it was very rough around the edges uh, last stream was just a lot of nights and it was all very messy um, but I did spend that evening tidying it up getting a few things set in stone because there was a few bits I wasn't sure of um, that I was wondering about but um, it's all sort of um, thought out now so I'm going to just quickly go through that to spend about five ten minutes just running through the timeline and then we'll jump into Pantheon so um, there is some additions and it has been tidied up so obviously it starts with the beginning a lot of these ages the very early ones very brief we don't know much about them they're a bit of a mystery but the important things have been highlighted here um, the beginning is like the most mysterious, we don't even know how many years ago it was, but then things start coming into form from this point on. So we have the Age of Magic after that, which we have said at this point in time was approximately 36,000 years ago. 
um, and this is when firsts form, the first ever like life, I guess you could say. Now this was what I was a little bit stuck on last stream, I was quite kind of trying to set in stone when do we first see life? And the, con the confusion at, at the time was when do we first see humans, humanity as we know it today. Um, and we were like, would it, what age would the humanity have been in? But I kind of, we kind of know that now and I'm very happy. I think it's really cool. So we'll go through it now, but it's not as early as you might think. Um, we have the first and obviously they're not really anything like humans. They're just magical energy. And then we had the next stage, 24,000 years ago, and that's the seconds. Um, they're a little bit more like human-like than the first were. They've got skin is starting to develop, but they're still nothing like humans as we know them. And th I've put a squid icon there, which is funny. Um, I guess you could say they resemble jellyfish, and I think squid was the closest thing because there wasn't any jellyfish emoji. So there's no bones. It's all just funny looking thing that's got skin over its magic and uh, I feel like having something for sure that's far removed from what humans are as we know them for so long ago in the early years of the earth is a, is a great place to start um, and then this is when things start getting a bit more like life as we know at the age of gods um, these ages are still a big mystery and there's no history planned or anything like that um, even these ones coming up, the history is still pretty vague at this point in time. But we, I have marked down the major events. Um, Kia, thank you so much for that sub. I appreciate it. 17 months. Oh my goodness. That is a long time. Nearly a year and a half. I appreciate it, Kia. Let's have some hype in chat. How have you been? How are you doing, my friend? Hi, Poo. Hope you have been well in your game. It's going well. For those of you who just come in and I'm just running through what we was doing last stream. I don't want to spend too long rambling about this, but I do want to get everyone up to speed on how it's all looking. And this is going to go in the Law Bible very soon. So it isn't quite in there yet because I wanted to organise it first, but it will be there as an actual timeline very soon. So you'll all see it anyway. And if you want to see it today, you can look at the VOD for sure because I'll be explaining it all in the today on stream so even if you're not here right now or you're lurking um you can always watch the vod to catch up um so this is the next the the third age when the third um the third thought form and this is when like i guess you could say you closest to humans for sure and they're going to be the owls and the fairies of the world the fairy because it makes sense doesn't it they're the superior race, they're a lot more, um, I think having them be before humanity and the beast races works. I think we did vaguely talk about that last stream, when would they have came about, but we didn't spend as much time as we should have thinking about the beast races or the elves and other races in general. Um, and then I realised after stream, yeah. You know, that's that's great, happy elves and fairies be the first ones there. And that would be the age where the lake fall tree um, was planted as well, 10k years ago, 10,000 years ago. Um, which, probably the oldest tree in the world, I would say so. The one, that, one that's still here today anyway. New in two years, doing well this week, I am playing Guy's Melody, a game made with MV. Oh, sounds fun, you'll have to now know what it's like. Awesome. Um, and yeah, as you can see, there's not much we know about these ages just yet, but it's cool to have this stuff set in stone. Um, now it's the age of stars, this was when stars formed and this was when the moon also changed its orbit and hid behind the earth and um, I guess you could say it was an end of the world scenario for people who were alive at that time um, and uh, probably a lot of people died uh, 
I could imagine it would kind of wreck the world quite a bit, uh, something of a change to that degree. But that was when stars were born, and also when the moon changed, which is kind of mentioned here very briefly on our calendar as well. Um, and other than that, there's, that's all we know about the age of stars, but this is when things start getting a bit more detailed at this point. And I love that each age is made. I know, right, Met, it's got a ton more organised from how it looked last stream. I thought, yeah, let's sum it up with emojis so we can visualise this. And uh, I was thinking, yeah, what emoji can we have for the Age of Ancients when these people are so mysterious and are kind of the halfway point between um, human and magic? And I thought, yeah, it's a jellyfish squid thing, right? <laughs> um, and it is the age of first, first men. Now, this is when humanity as we know it form, um, and they're the fourths. I think, yeah, that's definitely, I think it's a nice organised way to sum them up um, in sort of periods of time, like the ages of people, first, th seconds, thirds and fourths. And um, men and beasts, I get all the beast races, humans, what came along at this point. Um, so um, elves and fae have been around much, much longer, like double the time as beasts and men have. And it started as tribes, just like it really worked here. That's cavemen people, I guess. And then civilization formed um, a, little, a couple of hundred years after that. And I guess you could say that they're close parallels to the ancient Greek or ancient Romes. We can do whatever we want and be as creative as we want with those civilizations when we do build their histories. We don't have to completely copy them, we can be uh, creative but it's cool to kind of have a parallel and kind of look at real life um, cultures and civilizations as a bit of a guide and inspiration um, but eventually those civilizations fall and there's a massive question mark on them we don't know much about them at all we don't know any of the important people or who, who they are where they lived or nothing at all at this point and I kind of like that it's a bit open for us um, and then we have the Age of Kings now, and uh, um, I like that we, we've like titled all the ages as well, because we were kind of figuring out what we should title them last stream. Um, but this is the point where things start getting a little bit more um, present day. It's still like a few hundred years ago, but this is where the timeline starts getting a little bit more detailed. Um, so I says that the monarchy forms a little bit before the government. Um, I figure that when the government formed, that's when everything started changing because power hungry, right? Um, and they probably had an influence on a lot of things. And they were the ones that discovered the X in raindrops, a government scientist currently unnamed, of course. Um, and then shortly after that, like a decade or so after that, they will have created the currency. It probably would have took a bit of time for them to get that as a thing um, in the world and how get it established. So I'm sure there would have been a bit of a bit of people that were anti-raindrop currency around that time. So that's kind of intriguing too. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, this is definitely the modern time that we're going into now, the age of the fading stars. So this was when year zero begins on our calendar, which we talked about a lot last week and the week before. Um, the stars stop changing and begin, begin, begin to fade out little by little. And now this fading out is probably extremely slight. Um, it's not something that's going to happen instantly, but the stars are uh, fading. Um, over the years and it was 136 years ago and a lot of them are still in the sky in the present day so yeah it is a sly one but it is definitely an ominous looming threat that people don't want to happen because if the stars did completely fade out um the sky would go completely black right especially with the moon in the position it is away from the sun so that's an interesting bit of night time law to consider potentially um, and this was when 
the humans conquered like fun. And the reptiles moved into the cave, the war between the humans and reptile and the spell of the Everbloom Forest happened. So these three events here were like very episode one lore that we already established previously. That's specific to um, Lakefall and the Everbloom Forest area. Um, whereas this one is kind of a global thing that's kind of affecting the whole world as a whole. But this, this one is uh, um, regional. Although the spell of Everbloom Forest could have a global impact for sure, although Everbloom Forest is the epicenter of that spell. But the spell, in case anyone doesn't know what the spell of Everbloom Forest is, that is what has caused the sentience of objects in the present day. The birth of Carol the Barrel, for one. And that was 15 months ago, and that is why I've called the next one the Age of Sentient Objects. Um, because we, if you notice, we've been caught naming them all after the people of those those times. Um, so it kind of makes sense to follow the pattern because I guess these are the people of this time, the sentient objects. Um, and uh, this was when objects were coming to life. So we've got the Carol and a family timeline here of when they were born, um, which eventually is the present day when Carol meets the hero. So this is the most detailed timeline we've got and that's already on the Lord Bible as well. Um, that timeline was written on the Lord Bible like last year, a while ago. Um, so it's really cool that we've uh, sort of established the eras before this one because we already knew this one and parts of that one though we hadn't set a date. So it's nice and organised now and the early ages are still vague enough to be creative and think of interesting things and interesting peoples that could have lived at that time. Um, and um, we are going to move on to the Pantheon and discussion today so that's going to be a cool one and we're definitely going to keep this this timeline up as a reference point because i think it's going to be pretty important um which we'll talk about in a sec nice yeah hi poo hi poo did and I've, I've got your tab up that you sent here met in the discord by the way because we might have a peek at that in a bit so it looked quite intriguing all right so i think that's enough time talking about that timeline Okay, so I am going to get a Google Sheet up because I think it's going to be a lot more organised for us to do it in Google sh um, Forms or, yeah, Google Sheets is it called, um, than um, Google Docs because we'll be having columns and, and a group of people here for the Pantheon so it could get pretty messy if we have a super long doc. So we'll do it this way instead, a bit like how we did it for our uh, beliefs and mega list that we did over Christmas. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I don't know if you make a new doc on this, there we go. So let's just get, and all this stuff, like all this, this these Google Docs and all these entitled spreadsheets, that I've got here, they will all get transferred to the Law Bible eventually. I think the timeline's at a point now, because it's super organised now, to get transferred over to the Law Bible soon. Um, but on stream, it's always easier to just get messy in Google Docs or in Google Sheets, because it's great for writing notes on. Um, especially when everything's very disorganised. I don't like to add to the law bible until everything's neat and perfect and sound stone. Hi Kay, how you doing? It's good to see you working and looking. Thanks for stopping in, it's so good to see you. Hope things are going well on your end. How are you? How's the sewing? I can't remember how you said you were doing with that. I think I saw you streaming actually the other day and she was doing something right to the sewing. I hope that's going well. Kay's really talented at uh, crafts, folks. If you like chill crafting streams, then make sure you check her out. Um, okay, so 
let's um, we'll probably have to zoom in on this a bit because it's going to be super small otherwise and I'm not going to worry about making it look like a masterpiece at this point in time um, but as long as it looks okay and we can all see what's going on I have it on 200% zoom. Um, okay. There we go. We can put the titles and things in here. And all the information can go in these ones. We'll see how it goes. I'm pretty clueless and in going into this a bit of a blank slate today, but it, there are there is a bit of a structure I have, and there's a, definitely some things in mind. But it's exciting because you guys are going to help fill in the gaps, and um, all all my uh, rough thoughts that I've got together, we can slowly form it as well. So I think I want to add a bit of a heading here though because um, I want to write a bit of a description for you guys so anyone coming in chat gets a little bit of a, an explanation of what's going on so I will title this pantheon first of all Been thinking about purchasing a 3D resin printer and try my own hand at some crafting. Awesome, that's awesome, Van. I've always wished that I could be better at that side of things, but I can, I can be a little bit impatient. I did do a cross stitch once for a friend's birthday present, or it might have been a Christmas present years ago, and I was really proud of it. But it took me about a month to do it, because I'm slow. Just back at work today, so feeling it after a four day weekend. Cross stitch and crochet. It's very cool though when you do it and you can say, I've done that. Make this text. It's a little bit cut off, so what I am going to do um, is move this screen across folks so you can actually all see it there we go make that even bigger still because this is the heading okay so there's a bit of space for a little bit of a brief description here awesome Right, so a bit of a summary on what we know so far. I think it's worth going into um, our World Anvil Law Bible to just have a bit of an overview on what the plan is for the Pantheon because we do have a couple of things we already know. So anyone who wants to have a nosy at our Law Bible, feel free to have a peek, folks. Um, this is where all the lore of the game is going to go between now and forever. Um, it's great. It's called World Anvil and it's a really cool, tidy, um, almost like a Wikipedia that you can use for your world building. Um, so, we, we don't have much written at all because our lore is still very, very open, but over time it's gonna get really set in stone, especially this month as we're working on this. We're gonna have a lot more detail about our world. But one thing that we already did set in stone a very, very long time ago during the scene between the barrels was this. Um, something, a group of people called the Legends of Old. Um, um, they are actually the stars. So, the stars of the Pantheon. The rulers, leaders, heroes of the past, right? You can't get any more um, important than that. Um, and uh, 
that is their name, Legend. Legends of Old or Legends, if you want to shorten it. And it is believed that they look down on the world and watch over everybody. So that's something to think about. Are these gods, do they interact with the people in this world? That's an interesting one. Or do, do, do they just observe? Do they actually come down to the earth? Or do they, are they just restricted to being a star in the sky? Their soul is restricted. So that's a couple of things to think about as well. But we don't have to get into the super depth and detail today i'm thinking we can be a little bit more va um, vague today and open about it um and just get some like traits and categories set um and the very easy things this stream and we can slowly get into the more detail and deeper lore of them maybe next stream but we'll see how it goes we're definitely going to start easy um but uh if anyone has any anything that they, th that they think as we do this definitely say because it's always good to consider things and some things might have not cross my mind as we do this um okay so this might need a bit of an update because this stars fading thing and the stars changing needs to be a little bit more clarified um and these are just myths and tales that that, that has passed and we i want to make an entire article on myths and tales um and fables and rumors and things like that at some point and i think that can really be extended on i think that'd be fun to do for a law stream at some point and you will use that as a starting point but all this is where we got the law idea in the first place of the moon and um its position um in space and things it's created quite an intriguing sort of world already um okay so so i'm gonna write a bit of a description first of all before we start actually writing down the get, getting these uh legends all gods planned um okay so already know what's in here first of all but super summarized if we can are the stars commonly known I want you to be able to see this without it getting chopped off though, so. For some reason, Google Sheet doesn't like putting things on a new line. Maybe we should do As I says, I'm not gonna work on making this super beautiful today. It can be very messy and rough. We gotta just get thoughts down first. Um, <clears throat> Terrible at knitting. Left-handedness can be an issue with those things. Yeah, I'm left-handed too. What a coincidence. Yeah, I, that's how I feel about myself as well. We always struggle as left-handers. Maybe the gods could time to raindrops and like maybe the special property of raindrops is used in a spell that helps people commune with the gods. So rituals used to be done in the rain, but storing raindrops allows them to be done um, anytime or indoors. Interesting. 
I'll, I'll reread that one for sure because I'm sure that today is going to be full of some lore ideas and I could definitely, um, even though there's a few ideas I've got in mind already, I'm sure that there's going to be um, some things you guys say that could be, could that could work and that could be intriguing things to to look into for sure but I know that there's probably going to be a few things said and I'll probably get a bit brave about today again so anything that's more complex I'll probably read off stream but don't you worry I'm going to at least weigh everything up that anyone says um okay so um Especially because next stream, probably Thursday stream, we're going to get more into the nitty gritty, the in depth stuff. Whereas today is going to be more about the vague overall structure and an idea of the Pantheon. So um, it will give me a chance to reread any any thoughts that you guys have today to take into next stream. Um, okay, so. I remember I was gonna say something and it slipped my mind what it was. I'm gonna bold the stars bit. I'm gonna bold anything that's key. So that is information we know already, so that's down. Um now. One interesting thing about the world is that we mentioned fading stars that have changed over history. So that sort of law in itself lets us be flexible. We can focus on the brightest stars, the ones that um, are more constant for the actual pantheon. But there's flexibility there for other other important people and other legends to also exist if the story needs them to um, or gods of the past legends of the past that whose stars have faded and aren't as prominent now because um, I'm sure over time you never know the might I know some people's bios for their characters mention sort of gods and important people but it's um but it's uh some of that law might have to change to fit with what we're about to create today but you know the fact is we there could these stars there could be absolutely hundreds of of these uh basing it basing the gods on stars means there could literally be hundreds unlimited but of course because of we need a cut off point we're gonna have a small we're probably not gonna go too far in fact we're gonna only have handful of in our pantheon really because we don't want to like go wild but you know it's there's others and ha or could have been others and has been others but the plot or the story itself might not necessarily focus on them completely but i like the flexibilities potentially there um, we don't have to be rigid about it and be like oh we can only have these six um, and forever like if there was ever a, another god or another legend we could be like oh yeah they did exist once but their star just faded um now they've right the gods rise and fall over time um but i'm seeing this this pantheon that we're about to do is the ones that are the brightest and most constant stars in the sky and the ones that have had the biggest impact on the world and the people living here now. Um, um, so, we, the idea was, I thought about this before with our calendar. We've got some question marks here for the days of the week. We still haven't named them. We've named the months, but we haven't named the days. So, my first thought was, what if the days of the week were named after the the on the legends of old and obviously the six days in the week so that would be a pantheon of six and this that would be the six brightest um the six most key and most constant 
pan. So I'll add that as a bit of info too. This is going to go on another line as well soon. Hmm. Because so there is a bit of info I want to get in for some notes. But this is where Google Docs is better than Google Sheets. Um, but we'll figure it out. We'll just insert a few lines. Um, but it's been going to be great for tables and getting all tight, like a bit, a bunch of info in for, for them. Um, so the main. We'll start a new line for this one. Consists of the six brightest um, stars. Because we could easily go wild on this, we could be like, okay, we'll have we'll have uh, fifty, <laughs> and it would just be a lot of work for us, and we'd be here for months just planning them all. But it's, I think, six is a great starting point, and having them be like kind of the key ones that we sort of build around. And who knows that that one we could think about the family of each of those six, and who, what their lives were like more thoroughly, if we wish. Um, but um, this way it's less overwhelming if we have a smaller a smaller pantheon on and then if we had a gigantic one because I'm well aware that a lot of pantheons can be quite large um, and some can be small and I, I know some games is it Zelda I'm not an expert Zelda because I've not really played it but they've only like got three gods in their game I believe hope I've got the right game um, use word wrap that will help you oh okay awesome so um, as you can tell, I'm a Google Sheet noob. Text wrap in there it is. Wrap. Awesome. Thank you so much, fan. I was like thinking, oh my goodness me, that is a bit of a pain in the butt, right? Having to have a new line for each bit of text. That certainly makes it easier. So now we can just put those there. So, it's also in the toolbar. Oh, is it? Yeah, uh, Google Sheets is the one I've used less of than most, probably because I am i don't like spreadsheets. <laughs> but they can be great for, for things like world building. When, when you're not doing numbers or maths, if you're doing things like this, they're cool then, but not with how they're normally used. Hi, Zexy, how are you doing? How are you doing? How are you well? Look, thank you for the look, Zexy. I hope you're good. Hope things are good and you had a good weekend. Um, see where I is on the diagonal. I pick the button left of that. This one here. Oh yes, that it is. Thank you very much for giving me that little tip. So the main thoughts are so far that the main pantheon actually just consists of the six brightest so we don't get too crazy with this but the flexibility is open for there to be other legends of old um, and other um, leaders and rulers that are important but their stars have just got faded in the age of the faded, fading stars um, and um, they're not as prominent today. Um, okay, so um, next bit of info. Right, yeah. And each of the days of the week are named after them. It's I think it's perfect to do that to name the days of the week after the main six because we, we were drawing a bit of a blank the other week on what we could name the days of the week after. Um, but on planet Earth, I believe that our days of the week are named after uh, gods, right? Or celestial objects, or a bit of both. Um, 
and that's kind of what I saw. So, okay. Um, next bit. Um, the smaller fading stars around them are also. Um, I think I need to be a little bit more specific here. Um, Because really, it's the souls that the. Well, well, I will get into that in a bit. We'll just get simple if we can. Um, I think that's really straightforward, though, that saying that it's their souls. So it doesn't need to be added anywhere. Because that's what Hank says to Oliver. He says that the. Uh, the, so the, the stars are the souls of the important people of the past. Um, So the smaller fading stars around them were also important leaders, rulers, and heroes of the past. Nika says we, we could, we don't even have to even consider these. There could just literally be background stuff um, that are not even in the game. But it's cool that the flexibility is there just in case we need to add someone extra that happened to be important if we realise it at a later date. Um, Okay, I think that's enough notes actually for that. I think we can start filling stuff in now. Hi Rod, how are things going? It's good to see you. Um, say hi, make sure you're Any plans for the evening week to come? Just chilling and hoping that my noisy neighbours don't disturb me. That's why I'm looking forward to the house move whenever that's going to actually happen because I won't get any more, any more noisy neighbours. <laughs> Peace and quiet. Um, even if a star is visible, it might just be a minor local god he hero that wouldn't get brought up as often until we need them. Like when we get to the desert lizards, we could just say that he they are heroes that only they talk about. Yeah, and like, you know, one thing, now you've mentioned that, Met, it's brought to mind something else that, it, that did cross my mind over the weekend. I figured that the six that we're going to actually focus on could be regional as well in themselves. Um, and I kind of see that then making them regional. Um, oh God, my bloody auntie neighbours started, hasn't they? They've probably heard what I said. And now they're getting angry at me, so the pups making a noise. Oh God. Um, okay, um... As long as it doesn't disturb me, I'm fine. But if I start acting weird and distracted, chat, you know why. Because someone's knocking at the side of me. You you guys probably can't hear it, but I can. Um, right, so what was I saying? I was saying I thought about the idea of, idea of making them regional. Um, each of the six spread across um, the continent. Um, each with their own, like, monument in different regions that symbolises them perhaps um, and then it allows for um, what was it what were my notes let me just find them um Yeah, that was it. So, have it because like different parts of the world, we are going to different parts of the world in each episode. So, to see different ways of life and how different people live and behave 
and exploring different themes across each of the episodes is is intriguing because although oh, the, the saga raindrop chronicles is gonna follow an overarching story a continuous overarching story between episodes um it's cool to like make the episodes different in setting as well just to explore different things rather than have episode the future episodes just be a copy of Everbloom forest still all over again um so having like a different sort of uh I mean, we did say so there's going to be six episodes. That's the plan, a six episode series. So even thinking a god per episode is an interesting plan. Because so I think it's important to consider how each of these legends are going to affect the story as well. Because it's easy to get caught up in world building and get all um, fascinated by these people you're building and creating. But thinking about the impact they actually have on the game and the story itself each of them more significantly is also really cool so thinking of it in a structure of six maybe even one one monument in spread across the regions i was just gonna map up because i actually um did get this up the other day just to have a reminder of what we did before we get into writing down a few details just get paint up here it is um so this was a really rough episode plan of what the series could be like in terms of regions we're in per episode we did this a while back now um oh i heard it that time actually you did you heard it yeah it's annoying uh, <laughs> but, but uh it was a big big knock and he, he probably can hear every single word I'm saying you now because we're really thin balls and it makes me really paranoid because I heard him on the phone the other day really loud. And it was like, I was like, I hope I'm not like that when I'm streaming because he'd hate me. <laughs> but we're moving soon, so I hope so anyway. So it's not for too long I have to put up with it, hopefully. It can be a bit distracting though, I have to say. Especially when you're trying to be creative. Um, and um, okay, so here it is. Um, so we have episode one of Bloom Forest, and as time goes on, I figured that we're obvious we're gonna probably see more zones per episode. Just, to be honest, the farmland zone and the highland zone, where the capital's gonna be, are pretty much together and one and the same. But. Uh, they're, they're kind of split and divided as well like royalty and the government and that would live there but the more down to earth folk could live in the farmland section and then we have like the more colder zones here and then we have the more deserty zones here so everything's kind of linked we've got the, the desert jungle savanna um all in one and um moving to the very mysterious and ethereal places um higher higher up these like the end game zones and the fairy kingdom so just as a, a rough guide there could be one monument in everblue forest one in uh, this the desert place one in the snow place one in the badlands one in the fairy kingdom and that nicely spreads them out then and that gives us the opportunity to explore different themes in different legends per episode so that's something to consider too as we build them and think of their traits and their histories and backstories as well um but it's a nice a way a way to organize it rather than just have them all be random with no link whatsoever and also you know it's interesting to make it regional rather than have all six be global and it, doing it in sections and places um, gives you an idea of how people have been influenced differently by the god because I assume that the one there in each region will predominantly worship that legend the one that's close to them I assume I mean there could be some that rebel and don't but that's something to think about too but we can eventually map out and I did actually put these little six blobs here as the plan was to sort of put each of them on the map 
and label them for what God is where, um, what God is like, so worshipped where and all those kind of things, but we can do that a little bit later. Um, okay, so now for the interesting bit. Now we've summarised it all and what the plan is, now things are going to get fun. And this is why we have a spreadsheet in the first place. So, uh, I've just realised that we've got a super long one here and that's no good because we want them all to be the same size. How can we make it flow over, can we? That's the only problem with the wrap thing. I mean, we'd have to have it like that. Not that it's the end of the world to just have it that bit longer. Um, but, uh, we'll, we'll have it like that for now if we have to. So, we'll just label them roughly here. Let's, I think it'll look better with white text. Um, legend 2 Legend 3 Legend 4 I'm wondering what terminology we're going to get set on here, legends or gods. I feel legend is very fitting because we call them the legends of old anyway. And um, it makes it seem a little, bit, a little bit more relatable. Like these people, they were once just people. Because that's kind of the thing here. Rather than them being anything supernatural or out the ordinary they were literally just people that once lived um, they're just important leaders rulers of the past um, who are now who now whose souls are now in the sky um, so we're building the history of ordinary folk here who just did something pretty cool when, when they lived And I think that's pretty interesting and more relatable rather than just having them be um, super like, you know, unusual gods or anything that's hard to wrap your head around. Me and Van were talking about it, weren't we? And you like said something like Bilbo Baggins is an example. It's someone who did something great, but he's just saying, you know, it's just an ordinary guy that wasn't really looking for he's just um, I need to watch Lord of the Rings again to be honest I want to do a marathon and so they're sort of like paragons from the dwarven culture in the dragon age okay, and that's another saga I need to play I'm ashamed of myself sexy that I never actually have um, I mean I did start the first dragon age recently quite recently anyway but I never finished it, but I really liked it. I just didn't get, end up getting the time. Um, and I'm, I love Mass Effect, so I'm sure I love Dragon Age as well, especially with it being fantasy. Um, um, but yeah, if I'd like, I need to do a bit of research because I can't confirm whether they like those or, or not, considering I've not played it. But does anyone else, do, do you know them, Van? I'm assuming you're responding to that. Um, okay, so it's all a bit of a mess. How do, is there a way to get them all the same size easily? These uh, these columns. <laughs> I said I'm not going to fuss about with the appearance 
today because I want to get in far down most of all. I can make it tidy off stream. But I still want it to be a little bit presentable. I don't want it to look too much of a, a disaster. And I want most most important of all, I want everybody to be able to see all six columns on the screen because it's no good if half of them are coming off the edge. So I think that we sort of nearly got them fitted. Just a little bit smaller. I'm not going to make that smaller because this is where the questions are going to go and the headings. So we need to make that reasonably large, you know. Yeah, we're nearly fitting them on. I'm sure there's a quicker way to do this, but I'll know for next time. We've mostly got them all the same size now, so I think we could. Um, you played Dragon Age Origins? Yeah, is it worth worth me having a go, do you reckon? I've heard, I've heard nothing but good things about that game. Well, the whole series, really. Um, okay, so but yeah, it was pretty much looking at this article that we wrote ages ago. It was pretty, it was pretty obvious that they were going to just be ordinary folk, right? Ordinary folk that just did something really cool and awesome and worthy of respect and admiration while they were on the planet and lived during their lifetime. But really deep down they're just ordinary beings, um, no different to the hero of today in Raindrop Chronicles that you play as as the protagonist, say. Um, so, um... They're a little bit more relatable, these, uh, the, this pantheon, they're nothing super supernatural or mystical. Um, okay, so, why wasn't, oh there we go, I was thinking why can't I see the text? And it's because it's the wrong colour, <laughs> it's grey and it's camouflage and there we go. Um, okay, so, there's a few headings to get down. And we'll slowly start filling them out over the stream. I hope that you can see it all okay, guys. I mean, I'd love to zoom in a little bit more. Um, but then you'd I think we'd start getting them all chopped off, wouldn't we? And we wouldn't see. I want I want everyone to see them all on the screen together, ideally. Um, so name of day. Because, like we said, we're going to name the six days of the week after them on our calendar. So that's going to be the fun bit. Um, and, you know, just talking about the calendar just very briefly, um, six was a great number. You know, we could have gone for seven like on ours, but it would have um, not worked because the whole plan is to have 600, three, 360 days in the year in this world because it, it's a great number and um, it's easy to divide into smaller segments that are equal because I love the idea of the months all being the same in this world and all having 30 days rather than odd days just for simpleness simple is better really in my opinion so each day is 30 days so that nicely made it dividable to have a six day week of five weeks each so we fell on for the six days and I think six is a great number for the Pantheon. It's not too much where we get overwhelmed with the amount of folk we're creating. Um, they're memorable, like this way people who play the game and get into the lore will easily be able to name the six legends off by heart once they know the lore, like when we have trivia. Whereas if we had too many, that's when you start forgetting them and losing track. But like we, we've got the flexibility open to have others if we want if we want to or need to, which is why it's cool to have that law of saying go there the smaller fading stars that sort of rise that rose but then fell over time. So that really works well with the law we've already built with the stars not being constant. But these ones are constant stars and are also the brightest. 
and I'm excited to see who we make. Um, and there, I do have a few ideas in mind of structure and things like that. I'm not completely a blank slate on who these gods are going to be, but there's definitely gaps that we can fill in together um, and, and other things. So let's um, get some more before we fill in the names of the day. Because the names of the day is going to be something we're not going to instantly figure out for all of them. That might be something we're feeling last for all we you know. Um, names can be a tricky thing. Um, so next one is, and I'm sure we'll be, I'll be adding others, but it's easy enough to add another row if necessary. Um, name. Next one that's important is name of the legend. Well, I was going to say name of the legend the day came from because obviously the day, the day itself is only going to be um, a shortened version of the legend's full name because um, it's going to end in day. So the first part will be like the first part of their name and so their full name needs to go in somewhere but seeing that it's going to go there anyway so we might not need that one because we're going to have their name there, there anyway. Um, so next one is uh, race, um, gender. In class because they probably were quite good in battle you know if they're legends they probably could fight some of them might not have been fighters though but I'm sure they would have had a class like you know herbalist or uh, something to that degree if they were not so much of a melee fighter there'll be something that they can each be anywhere but just Briefly talking about this before we move on, one thing 100% that is really important to me with this pantheon is that we have a very diverse selection of race and genders here. Now we don't want to have all of the legends be human, in fact I'd be for having zero of them be human in all honesty. I think this is an interesting chance to explore other races. Um, and um, for sure the elves and fae for example might you might get more like we might have two elves for example in this because they are the ones that have lived longer and were part of the age of stars and age of gods so there's more chance that we're going to get more um, fae or elves like just two say or of, of those but not where it's like six halves or six fair or anything. I still want it to be diverse to allow for room for other races. But um, the the no humans as we know them and beast races didn't come about till the age of first men as we've got here. So because they've been around for less years in time, you know, it, the, there was there's probably less of them that have made an impact where you can imagine there's probably been a ton of hours and fire that have made an impact over the ages um, as they've been here earlier and if anyone's just coming in and missed me going through the timeline feel free to re-watch the VOD um, I spoke about it all at the start of the stream and I ran through the timeline and how everything works. That's going to be on the Law Bible at some point. But I think it's at a point now where it's nicely set in stone. Um, okay, so the next one that's important. Let's catch up with chat first before I carry on. And um, but it is worth playing. But as far as Google Sheet, don't bother to tidy anything till you're the in front there. Yeah, it's going to get very messy, isn't it? So I've got to try and make sure I don't get too caught up in presentation today. Tidying up can be done after. So prepare to get messy, folks. But I imagine there's still going to be a few blanks at the end of this stream. In fact, I'm expecting that. Um, I'm only planning to get the foundation and some of the uh, 
simple bits filled in today and then we can the last stream of the week thursday's stream we can get into more depth and detail then potentially um and oh i like blurring the line between natural and supernatural like that i forgot what i said met and what my comment was in reference to that, that image for good content and if you're short on time you could also listen to playthroughs while you work you'd still get the narrative and world explosion without having to invest time into playing through the mechanics yeah that's true zexy that's a really good point sometimes i get put off watching let's play simply because sometimes i want to play the game myself as you do but to get fully immersed but it can be a really good idea to do that if you don't you don't have the time so each month starts on the same day of the week yes Matt, that is that is the case set for simplicity really because it's it's there's nothing more annoying than messiness and for me um and that's another reason why i made march the first month of the year as well so we could have all the green months together rather than have the blue months split because if you look at the uh how they relate on the gregorian calendar new green is equivalent to march and um blue, old blue is equivalent to february so but this is interesting because this calendar was how it was like in the roman days i believe i believe i did read somewhere that the, the calendar once did begin in march um i don't know if the source was true but that's what it said and that was very intriguing to me but before that, if we'd have kept December the last day of the year, it would have split the blue months and we would have had new blue as the last day month of the year and then full blue and old blue at the start and it felt a bit messy. So it's nice and tidy to have all the greens together. Um, and green, are that, they're the spring months basically. Gold, they're the summer months. Rose are the autumn months and blue are the winter months. It's quite straightforward, really, and I think it's quite simple enough to latch on to and realise what's what, what the equivalent is. Um, I'm quite pleased with the different colours we've got as well because it, it goes like a bit of a rainbow, like a prism. The colours blend into each other um, nicely, and all the greens. Uh, together so yeah that looks like a rainbow it's pretty um back to the spreadsheet um and something you could do is have each legend have a version with each race the version is basically the same just with just a small change is made to benefit the culture and each race thinks the version is the correct version yeah those complexities are something to think about too um i mean that that sort of stuff is intriguing for sure and i'd be intrigued to explore that but we'll start simple and kind of sum them up as um what their truths are for now at least like the actual true essence of each legend but for sure rumors and false things may may have been uh, created over time and that's something to think about and consider as well what has been made up what has been twisted i mean roots and rumors it's all about twisted facts right um and i think that's intriguing too because all these legends all six of them are probably good people or at least have positive traits which i'm going to talk about in the next one they all have they're gonna have like a sort of virtue and moral foot foundation that represents each of them so they've all got that positive virtue but even their positive virtues when you think about bad people and evil people and villains they could have twisted that virtue into something else something that the legend never really stood for but they've made it that way because that's what happens right but there is going to be a truth like i think it's for clarity it's good to have like oh that that one that legend is it that's actually what they are but also having another section of rumors and things that have been twisted over like over time all by different cultures and races and factions etc um and you know there's not many dog people so far and if there's a legendary dog person that start could be with the dogs that 
star could be what dot dogs howl at instead of the moon yeah that's very intriguing actually because with the moon being dark and because it is the, the the whole moon lore is very the moon is a very background feature of this world and uh it's kind of just it's there but it's almost non-existent and dark now so that works i think and i was thinking the same actually because i'm all for the diversity and having a bunch of different races for these legends one of them should be a canine race um so we'll get thoughts down about that in a sec because the next one is virtue and moral foundation which to me is an intriguing can we get the word wrap on that one as well that's the text rapid, isn't it? There we go. Um, because I saw some cool... Um, well, these are the Jungian archetypes, but we could base them on that too. But there's also something like this too, which... And six, it fits nicely, right? So the, the interesting thing about this one is that wisdom, courage, humanity are, is our game mechanic for the protagonists morals the moral scale with with wise points evil points bravery points um the courage is the bravery points and obviously the good points the evil points would relate with the humanity one so that was quite intriguing as well because it can't it, there's a link and connection then between what we have as our moral compass and what we're building on with our um, legends as well and although transcendence justice and moderation aren't a, part of our moral um things with our hero in the game it's still interesting and it's a good way to keep them very diverse from each other as well rather than have anyone in the pantheon be too savvy because that's a complete no no i want every single one of these six to be very distinct from each other ideally so because of that i am going to think of these as a base but obviously you know there's room for using different words um if we wished but i think that's a good thing to look at um, these sort of could relate as well um, I could imagine, for example, the wisdom one taking traits off the sage one, of course. So I'm sure there's an equivalent of, of these that would fit into these as well. The same would go for any kind of virtue system. I think all of them could like match with, each, with different ones. Um, there's the holy virtues as well, the ones that are opposite the seven deadly sins. So... But that was harder to do because we haven't got the seven days, we have the six. So this one fits nicely. So I'm going to add those here now, seeing as we already know what we could base these on. Um, it's kind of irresistible not to base it on these when they're staring right in our face. The wisdom, courage and humanity one, which just so happens to be what we were basing our hero on um, anyway. We might change these around, like I'm putting them in this order for now, but obviously we'll do it to match with the calendar when we when we do that. But for now we'll just put it like this. I should probably, what I'm going to do is uh, put all these centre just so it's easier. Um... And the thing, interesting thing about this, they're all positive traits, right? They're all just positive in different ways. Um, and um, that way, we're making all these good legends, but not so they're all carbon copies of each other. They all represent different positive virtues. And this is where it's going to be interested in how the evil people twist these things. Because as Sexy says, it kind of made me think, you know, we're going to have twisted facts and... Um, evil factions, bad people, um, they want someone to worship too, so it would have been easy for them to potentially latch on to someone and maybe kind of twist what they was all about and make it their own version, their own god in their heads. That as isn't actually the real truth about them. 
Um, and that's like just another thing altogether. And uh, like we could make an entire massive page of just falses and rumours if we wanted, because I can imagine that could go into a lot of depth. Um, justice is another. And moderation is another as well. If anyone else knows any more like virtue systems, feel free to send them over though, because um, it'd be cool to kind of look at all of them and look at positive traits for each. Hi, forgotten how you doing? Loving the twin tiles. Yeah, I like this hairstyle. It's it's a good one. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, how are you doing? I've forgotten. I hope you well. And the ancient Greeks would take myths and tweak them better to reflect one city stay over another. Yeah, for sure. But if anyone has any references at all about this sort of thing, feel free to post them in the Discord as well. Forgotten and anyone else popping in. So you know what we're doing? We're working on the Pandeon today. We're just going into this very slowly right now because it's such a big, massive, massive part of world building this could potentially be. And we're starting easy. We, we're starting really on things um, that are easy to make them distinct from each other so i'm already setting up the different moral foundations for each of them um and uh we'll start filling in ge genders and races from these very soon more than likely and the op the aim is to make them diverse we could even have a section for appearance if we want and make a sort of mood board of what each of them sort of look like once we start getting their personalities in and traits as well um, well these are the sort of traits really but we can go a bit deeper than that if we wanted um, but we, we, we're gonna have a section where we talk about their act of greatness and what they did when they lived and that will kind of go in deeper to what their why they are respected as well um, and was another one that I thought of then that we could have. Um, ah, that was it. I don't know if this is going to be the right. Uh, need to make all these white texts. They're all grey. There we go. Um, I don't know if this is what I want to call it, but area of expertise what inspired that idea was uh this tv tribe section where we've got different you know how people say god of war god of love god of death god of medicine god of food god of war well i've already said that or god of nature god of knowledge god of uh you can have like so many different like what they represent right so i figured a good one would be their area of expertise like for example the god of wisdom might be um knowledge medicine healing you know it could be anything anything that that that, that they are good at and what their skill set is and that's another way for us to help make them diverse from each other as well and we won't accidentally end up having two healers in the bunch because that's what we want to avoid we want to keep them distinct um, um, it was very transcendent your hoto said <laughs> how are you doing hope you're well Joe. I knew there were earlier systems of sins that had ate before the Christian one combined the vanity and hubris and the pride. Yeah, and if, if anyone finds any, I'm, I'm all intrigued to look into them all because this is just one that I found. And I, I latched onto this one because the six, so it's it's it fits nicely what we got. And I, I was just kind of like in awe of how our wisdom, bravery and compassion one happened to be there. <laughs> the first ones as well. Because I, you know, I'm all for this linking as much as possible um, to the story and the hero, the protagonist's morals and how they're shaped and how they're going to be affected by it all and who they're going to follow. Because how their morals are shaped could potentially affect who they align with out the legends. Maybe certain quests will end up unlocking if they have more wisdom and they get interactions with legend one that they wouldn't get if they had more of 
you know. So it, things like that are interesting as well, especially because this is a branching story and with multiple paths. Um, and we do. This is probably going to be regional as well, so we are going to have fast travel. So even if say the Legend One is in Everbloom, we can go back there in a future episode to unlock things um, because. Uh, we'll have fast travel but there could be other ways to keep in communication with them too like we we talked about with the lake fall tree for example with that sapling that they carry with them that could be a form of fast travel so there's always an option to do that with the other monuments but if not fast travel at the bare minimum works <laughs> um and hi rex how's it going it's so good to see you how is how is it going are you on a good morning careless handsome um, and I am very behind on the progress of the game. We'll try and make it to the streams more often now. But what is a good place to catch up with all the progress so far? Discord. Awesome you've got. And that's so awesome that you ask because it shows you've got an interest. But, I mean, in all honesty, YouTube is probably the best because all the VODs get put up on there. Every single stream gets uploaded on the YouTube. And I'm even titling them all now to what we specifically talked about on each stream and um, I've even made a bunch of playlists um, to section them up as well so feel free to, to follow that if you're not already for anyone who wants to keep up with the game but Twitter's also good because I put up a summary on there like a short tweet of what we do on each stream on there as well um, but in all honesty over the next several weeks i am intending to really give the law bible a bit of an upgrade with new information and, and over time um there's going to be more uh gameplay videos of the game once we get some visual content and of course the first playable build as well will really be when people get to keep up with the game because what's better to understand what's going on than actually playing it right um but with the world building we kind of talk about the bigger picture sometimes so a lot of this we're not even probably won't even see until future episodes some of it but i'm sure there's going to be bits that are very relevant to roots and rumors as well um and do you want them to be gods of things or gods of concept or gods of abstracts interesting question feel free to give a few a bit a few different ones and we'll, we'll weigh it up and see what fits best but looking at this there's a sort of moral foundation that i think is a good thing to base it on um but you know they'll all have um they'll all have things that like literally that they represent as well like some will have their own jobs there'll be i'm sure a bunch of healers in the bunch and a bunch of warriors and they'll all re represent different things so we could do all, all of them if we wanted um it is so huge to make a game so many things yeah it's best to to sort of um not think of it as a big whole thing but break it up into small steps that's how i see it um, so it doesn't become as overwhelming, which is why the episode format works pretty well. Um, oh, could you link where you found those virtue systems in the Discord? Yeah, I mean, in fact, I don't remember. This links to an article. Um, I think all I put in Google Images was um, uh, virtues and went in Google Images and just kept scrolling down for good image references. And then I came across this one. And then it linked to some kind of article but i will try and find the article after and pop it in the the ideas discussion for sure um but if i press view search google for image it'll probably find it for me so it'll be easy enough for me to do that um and okay we'll check the youtube out after stream ty yay yeah, for sure. And I mean, the VODs themselves are super long, like, you know, three hours long VODs I'm uploading to YouTube there. So you'd have to be obsessed with our project to watch them all, which is wonderful if you do. But a lot of the time, I'm sure people just have a little peek to recap rather than watch the whole thing or just watch the bits that take their interest most. 
Um, this is where it came from. Vans found it already. I think it's because I sent it to you, wasn't it? So you've already pressed go search Google Images. There you go. You got there's the link. Then Met or anyone else who wants to have a know. So, um, all right. So as for other interesting. Um, titles we can use for these legends um, the age they lived um, which looking at our timeline this is very relevant considering we got one here um, I imagine like what I think would be pretty cool here is if each of the six legends has li have lived at different points in time so some of them could have easily have been from the Age of Gods, for example, like some elven kind of types of folk could definitely fit in there. But then we could have more recent ones that are from the Age of the First Men. Um, I'm not sure if we'd get any as early as the Age of Kings. That might be a bit too modern time, but um, there could have been some that were from even the leader of an empire, for example. Because I don't even think this is restricted to a certain time period. Like, it doesn't have to be all people from the Age of Gods. The reason why it can't just be all people from the Age of Gods is because we'll just be stuck with elves and fairies then as our gods. And I like we says we want to have a bit of diversity in that. Maybe have a, a beast race or two as um, a god. So that means that some will have to be from the first men if we want to have beast races, because that's when they formed. Um, so that is a good one to put the age they live, just so we can clearly see uh, which era they was from. Um, and another one. So, I see the topic today is world body, but, uh, but are we discussing anything specific? Yes, forgotten. So, I have titled it up here, but it's gone and disappeared. Where is it hiding? Um, let's, yeah, there it is. The Pantheon. I changed the text to white, so it hid the title. We. This is the first stream Pantheon stream today that we've ever done, really. But we have briefly, very, very, very briefly discussed it in the past, but we've never had an entire stream dedicated to it. So we we sort of pulled out the stuff we already know about the Pantheon that's been talked about in previous streams, which we have on this article here on the Law Bible. And I've just made a bit of a summary there on what they are. So we're going to base the Pantheon on six legends. And these legends are, are people that were ordinary people that once lived that did something special um they could have been a leader a ruler or an important person but mostly they're just like us and the hero of this story um but they just did something really cool that really made a difference in their lifetimes and they're the six brightest stars um in the sky because that is what the, the gods are in this world they are the stars and um, we have the option to, to expand on this. Like we aren't limited to just the six. If we wanted to, we could have more, but it's nice to set in stone these as the six brightest stars, the six key ones. Um, but if there ever is an option for another, they could be considered one of the smaller fading stars because our law has kind of established the stars as not being constant. Um, not all of them anyway, they've changed. Um, so, next, the age of lived, yeah, that's where we got up to. Location of monument, that's where we are now. Um, so, briefly mentioned this a bit earlier, uh, monument, I think it's straightforward, like a statue. Something that people would um, go up to and worship and the centre... Uh, area the center space for where that god is prominent i guess and uh where they are remembered and i've got um a paint file open here of the world when we did this uh back last year um and a very rough guide of what zone will be in what episode 
so going by the six episode plan here um we it would be pretty cool because we've got six gods and six episodes one one per zone that is visited per episode potentially because then it gives a chance to explore different ways of life different cultures um, and the different attitudes and virtues and overall themes um, per episode so so for example there could be one in Everbloom be one uh, you know, anywhere, and I don't know why this isn't transparent, but that's something to de to, to decide a bit more once we've got a bit more information on the gods, where they're best fitted. Um, but that's pretty cool, because it makes the gods regional then, and um, and uh, different, different societies, different people would look at the ones closer to them, potentially, and it sort of forms like a culture, rather than them all just worshipping the all and treating them all the same um and um them all just being global but monuments are cool the reason i like the idea of an actual physical monument as well is because there's a chance for it being a place to trigger quests quest lines and potentially communicate with the god as well um and uh sort of as a sort of a point like a bit like for how the fast travel system would work where you can sort of interact and do things um, near the monument perhaps and I think because this is a game that's pretty cool um, and the wheel thing with the sage and stuff is familiar not sure where I saw it before though yeah I, I think that's pretty interesting too um, this one for sure especially uh because the these as well the lever mark like, they're, they're, it's an interesting one i think there that's worth looking into at some point a bit closer as well especially for the hero's morals because um i think we said didn't we that the hero the protagonist i think there's about nine different variations of different hero types you could be based on the three moral scales including one neutral one which some of these could fall nicely into different hero types for example though a lot of them could be seen as good some of these could be evil the jester pleasure one could be an evil one in my opinion even the magician power one but it's, it's a good thing just to look at as a bit of inspiration even if you're not rigid with it um okay here we are location bird um okay it's back oh no did it go down how's, how's it for the rest of you guys is it all working hope so is, is i don't know if it i don't think it's on my end it seems to be running okay um here so it might have been on twitch's end potentially um i remember the zone still want to try and get a character made for the corrupted eldritch looking down yeah that place is really fascinating right um it looks very dark and there'd be some right monsters there i'm sure but there's definitely a lot of um diversity like a lot of different looking locations in the world and that's what's intriguing as well because it changes things up and um yeah it's, it's it's fun it's exciting now back to the spreadsheet for the power of the it didn't go down for me awesome i'm glad it's i'm glad it's working maybe van just had a crash then well three times three times three times three is 27 but that yeah 27 is a bit much and i think that's if we included different variations of neutral wasn't it so just thinking of it as if we had just one overall neutral one um then it kind of would put it down to less than 27 combinations um, like see just ne any, any like any neutral hero all in one and then as you start to go into good wisdom and bravery on the scale based on your position you'd, you'd start to form a different kind of personality and i think the jungian archetypes are a diff interesting one to, to look at for that potentially considering there's quite a few there um Oh, 
By the way, it would be nice if one of the stars was a commoner that did something grand at the common people in today's time, having him, him, her like someone they strive to be. That's that's really cool. And I, I kind of think in a way they were all commoners, perhaps. Like maybe I'm exaggerating a bit there. Maybe some of them were more special than just commoners. But I definitely think they, I definitely see these guys as people that could have easily have just been ordinary people that just did something spectacular because they were in the right place at the right time. They really had a good attitude and the, the, the right sort of approach. It makes it a little bit more relatable when they're not like superhuman um, in that way. And then you, us as the hero playing the game kind of could imagine ourselves as them in the future um, if we followed a certain path, you, you know. And so, yes. Um, and everything is fine over here. Awesome day, there. And it didn't cut for me. I still see the stream. I'm glad it's working because then we, we don't have the worry of me rambling on and nobody hit with me. Yay. So we're getting all these uh, locations down now. Now the next one, we, we're sort of getting to the end now, folks. This one here, um, act of greatness. So obviously, even though I says that might be just normal people, um, that they would have had to have done something to, to be to be you know in the six because they would have had to have done something insanely memorable and life-changing for the people that lived on the um, planet at that in that time um, to be, to have made the the mark on the world that they have um, and be considered one of the six brightest stars so yes act of greatness will need to go in there and that will probably be quite long so we might end up making it a super long box like that because there'll be quite a bit of backstory going in that one potentially in fact i'm already going to make it a bit big um can we get those in the middle because i think that'll look better um there um and Maybe this rumour of what happened to them. So we're starting to get the rumours coming in then if we add that one. But we don't have to go super into detail with myths and lies at this point. That That's going to be an, a separate thing altogether. Um, and potentially we might need to make other columns for that, other rows, sorry. But that's the starting point on rumours. Like um, people would have sort of twisted truths of what their fate was what their last day on earth was like or whatever some of them could be true some of them could be a bunch of bs so that stuff is definitely intriguing to me and i'm, I'm kind of intrigued how each of these legends could have been changed into an evil version as well by bad people but potentially or maybe but certain not so good actions latched on to one legend over another and kind of twisted who there was about but the truth is there weren't they were, they were, they're all they're all good i like the idea of having good good gods rather than have a god who just only wants to be evil for no reason and not even worthy of being admired that would be rubbish I like them being good people, but if there is anything bad said about them, then it's just because that's what they've been twisted into being. Um, Raindrops is in full spreadsheet mode now. I know I've right forgotten it is. It's fun. And I think it's it's better doing something like this in um, spreadsheet rather than Google Docs, because I wanted you guys to be able to see all the legends on the screen together. So, yeah. And eventually they'll have articles in the law bible each one of them will as well um and uh um, another one i was going to put was we might this one might be better going here actually why they became that day because as a reminder each of these legends are going to be named as a day of the week um, our calendar here 
we have six days that are still question mark question marks because we don't know what we're going to call them yet um and we it's the six so it's perfect because the six that we're planning so now that we filled i think we filled everything in there might be a few more we we decide to add last minute and what as we do it but i think we've got enough of a structure to start filling things in now huzzah um so since the legends a bit that that being legends are beings that ascended that would disqualify the legendary tree from having a tree's day for a day of the week well this is an this is one thing i want to talk about now so it's interesting that Matt's bore up the tree because you know how I, I did say a bit earlier that i've already got a bit of a structure in mind for this a few ideas of something to go off i'm not completely blank on these gods as if there's definitely a few thoughts some of them are more fleshed out than others and others are com a complete blank slate um, i'm going to say that there's at least four or maybe three that are completely blank for us to decide to go with, but there's two or three that I have an idea about and one of those is the lake fall tree. <laughs> what a surprise. So, uh, something I thought, you know how we was talking about monuments? Well, as I said, it's probably going to be a monument per episode or like spread out across the planet over the continent. Um, that means there's going to be one in Evergreen Forest, right? Because it's the only, um, the only zone in episode one. So what a better monument than the Lightfall Tree, right? Because the monument doesn't have to be a statue. Um, it doesn't have to be a statue at all. It can be anything. And that includes a tree. Um, as long as it's some form of structure then I think that could be classed, that could work as a monument. Um, so, so yes, that is something. Now, there's already a couple of things that, that have set in, that I've already thought of for, for, for the tree one, but um, we'll get, we'll get them down slowly. Um, and yeah, the worst kind of adversary and evil for the sake of it, I actually find myself rooting for the bad guys often when they have a legitimate reason for doing what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. I'm the same forgotten. And the only like chaotic evil bad guy we've got so far is Father Maple, who hasn't really been talked about much just yet, but that's the only really 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 chaotic evil antagonist we've got and i think it's great to have that chaotic evil antagonist that's just pure evil with no redemption because they just add you gotta have that nastiness in a story you can't have everyone be shades of gray because then there's not enough contrast um, but even the bad ones, even the chaotic evils, they're the best when they have a backstory where you are like, oh my goodness, I wonder the evil. Those kind of villains are the best. Um, all right, so I've got to think where we can even start because it's so big, this is right, we've got so much. So we're probably going to start on the most simple ones first that are easier to fill in. And then we'll start filling in the really detailed ones like Acts of Greatness and that probably after that. And as I says, there's a couple of legends here I'm already sorted for because I wanted a base to shape this off. And I was thinking over the weekend and Van came up with a couple of thought, some thoughts as well. Um, so that's why I'm not blank slate because I'd have been a bit daunted if I came in this with no idea whatsoever so it was funny that Met mentioned the tree because you got it that is going to be one one of the monuments and I could see a bad guy who's just bad working if they're bad in an annoying way where they keep making excuses where it's obvious they're deflecting yeah some bad guys that are that are that are bad but there's room for redemption or interest in too. You gotta have bad guys for sure. But there's always gotta be a reason why they're bad. Or something that makes you at least sympathize with them to a certain degree, even if you think they're doing the wrong thing, as long as it's understandable why they're doing it. 
well it's not it doesn't make it right you, you know but you could kind of see why they ended up doing it or being that way even um okay so there's two legends and partially a third but not really much that i've thought about already so that'll leave um, at least half of them that are complete bank sites for us to fill in okay so um i'm thinking my start because there's just so much here to put in so we'll start with i think maybe i'm going to start filling in the ones we already i'm already sort of got an idea about and then we'll start going filling in the blanks like race and gender for the rest so there are looking at those the week these two are going to be the days of rest the last one and the first one um at first i was like i'll have the two days of rest to get together at the end of the week but li little bits of little bits of small things have made it more ideal to have them apart like bits of symbolism and some interesting things there so we will fill these in as legend one and legend six then for being the days of the week at the end um and their virtual mod foundation will have to be switched as well so the legend six one that I had in mind is the lake full tree one. Um, so what, what was that one? I've lost it. Moderation. Let's just put let's put courage there. And wisdom here. And moderation here for now. But a lot of these might end up getting switched around. Okay, so this one is the Lake Fall Tree one. So, location and monument. We'll fill in already what we already know. Um, Everbloom Forest. And we'll put in brackets the Lake Fall Tree. Only because that's the name we all know it by at the moment. Um, and it's the one we're most familiar with. Although it's definitely going to have a more specific name um and it fits with wisdom brilliantly because it's the wise old tree so yes um and me and van were talking a little bit over the weekend and we looked at the timeline because we've got this age of gods here and the late tree, fall tree was planted here, wasn't it? Oh my god, I'm sorry guys, but I was, I was hiding the, the, the spreadsheet. I apologise with that paint dock. But now you can see it. There we go, we got it up now. So the late fall tree was planted here in the Age of God. So it only made sense to have it be in this age where this god lived. Um and um if elves and fae are around at this time so fill that one in um and where were we age age they lived here so that was what was it let me remind myself the age of gods to a hunt 12,000 years ago. Right. So it's it was it's great to have um, a god in mind as a base because then once that god is thought up, it's easier to shape the others and make them as diverse as possible from this one. Um, so... Um, we'll, like, when we fill in the others, we'll, we'll try to not make too many of them or if any anymore be, be in the age of gods unless there was there was no other choice and they had to link or something but say if we've already got two that are from the age of gods then i'm probably going to be wanting to make the others from different ages for diversity and because we've got an elf here 
um, probably that takes up the elf slot and at most we'll have one more elf um, but no more than that because then we don't want elves to populate our pantheon too heavily um, moderation instead of wisdom oh yeah maybe uh, yeah the moderations be moved there now i had to move them about and the reason for that is because this legend is going to be the last day of the week um so moderation just be moved there to now but i might switch it around here because yeah moderation wouldn't fit with the light full tree would it so that would be weird it's definitely wisdom um okay uh, and so that's a, a bit of info we've got in and um there's going to be a few more bits to add in as well hmm male um okay so there's a bit of callback story for this this one and another one that will be the uh, legend one spot but as for the other legends blank slate so that's going to be what we're going to shape in a bit folks but we'll probably be filling them guys in more next stream because oh my god how is it already half past five okay so and then there's another one um We'll fill those in in a sec. I'm just trying to make sure there's nothing that I'm missing here. Um, okay, so there's two days I've all, that we've already got the names of. Um, I'm gonna actually put question mark day in for the other. So we can fill that in. Why has that gone big? How dare it? There we go, that's easier. Um, okay, so the days of rest. And this is really clever and I've, why I've latched on to this one. Um, because there's a bit of a pun on it that links with um, the name. So, your day, because it's your day, it's a day of rest, um, and I'm going to add another column here because I think this one is necessary, so people get the, sig the uh, significance. Right, so it's it's obviously got to be the name of the legend, so that's what we're going to fill in now. And we, me and Van were talking about um, names, how Faye and Alps could have been named, especially in history. And we figured that they could, they, something a little bit exotic sounding and unusual to... Uh, um, uh, what is what we what we know today is pretty cool and I'm going to add this here on the world building thing as well because this this could go in as a bit of Fay and Alvin backstory I'm trying to figure where it's relevant um here new page page break Age of stars and gods because they were around in life. Um, none of the, the six are first. Oh no! So the earliest, the young, absolute earliest age that a god can be will be the age of um, 
stars and gods folks so let's quickly go back to our timeline just to review that because in these times they were, weren't even barely human they were literally just magical energy and fish-like creatures with like a thin layer of skin on them so it's kind of uh difficult it's kind of cool to kind of keep them mysterious but this the age of gods that's kind of when it all first started humanity as we know it more in the form of a fae and elf rather than human men and beasts they came a bit later so the earliest is this so it, it works so well because that's when the late fall tree was planted so linking this late fall tree with a god that's elven or fae was fitting with being as that it all happened around that same time so um so this one that we're building here this last day of the week now is um going to be an age of god's period of time um and um like i said a little bit just a little bit of clarification folks i do have a bit of a structure as some of you might not know or might know behind the scenes i am i am like slowly forming a skeleton but um there's obviously always a lot of gaps to fill in for us as the community to decide um so sometimes there's going to be things that are established and other times there's going to be bits that aren't so this one actually works as something to established and um as well as another one that's going to be the courage legend and there is another one i have a little bit of a concept for the moderation one but it's a very very vague one but as for these legends they're a big question mark at the moment i don't have any name of day in mind for them or any race gender or or location a monument or anything so these are a complete blank so um, I'm gonna just first fill in the ones that I f I think are asserts and more same stone and then we can sh slowly shape the blank ones around them and make purposely make them diverse and different from each other if possible well we'll make it possible um, okay um so where were we i'm trying to remember what we was talking about <laughs> there we were we was talking about the age of gods right so that's one just adding a bit of info in for now in fact we'll add it here it's probably going to be more make a bit more sense to add it here so the owls and fae of this age because it was so long ago they're not really like the owls and fae of today like i guess they're similar but it's definitely two, uh, uh, 12,000 years ago things may have progressed a bit differently so their names were probably a little bit more exotic sounding so um, Faye Elves names end in Sarsa and Faye names end in dar now it might seem a bit strange why this is so rigid and why i've set this in stone so much but that's because uh the holiday names from them are just re i really latched onto them because they're pretty clever so well i think they are anyway <laughs> um okay so um i think the your day one is good and um that's because they've got that name so the first part of the name it's named after and i think that sounds very uh i think that sounds very exotic sounding like it's to make making them sound like not just calling them bob or something like that i think is important because this was a, t a time long a long gone by um and elves in fae of today have got names like let me try and think of some of the elves we've got in the world what's um what's uh zexian's fae called cryos cryos that's it and uh we got fae a moon star is another fae in the world their names are a little bit more um like you know commonplace perhaps they're still quite unique don't get me wrong but they're more modern sounding 
and a little bit more um, of the time of today, fantasy world of today, perhaps. So going for something really like unusual for older older names is is it works quite well. And it worked because it's your day, day of rest. So I'm also going to put that in brackets. A day of rest where you get to decide whatever you want. What you do. It's the equivalent of Saturday in this world. I guess. I, guess, I, I suppose this would be the equivalent of Sunday if it's the first day. Um and I think we'll write a little bit of a description here Day of rest and healing. I think we'll we'll make a little bit less specific, a little bit more specific than that, than just day of rest. Um, so healing as well. And I think that uh, nicely will fit into the fact that they could be a healer, right? Um. Making this link is important and this goes with everyone that we do because um, we don't want to make someone say a mage and then have it as a day of healing because mages do the opposite of healing. So um, keeping keeping the ties close with is, is, is something to aim for with them all. Um, Okay, so there's there's an act of greatness that we can fill in, and there's already a, a sort of brief summary for this one that, that I've already got in mind to fill in. Um, but we'll do that shortly. In fact, I'm more inclined to get the get, do do the um, yeah, the stories and backstories for each of them on Thursday, um, and just add the quick information in today for each of them. And, and set in stone a bit of diversity. Um, okay, so there was one more I thought um, that could be a cool one from, to have from the legends, um, at the Age of Gods. And I don't think there will be any more from that age. I mean, who knows, there could be, we might decide there should be, but chances are if we've already got one Fae and one Elf, we're not gonna want too many fairies and elves. We're going to want to mix it up with a bit of beast and a bit of uh, of our other races. So you'll, we might find we'll be going into the age of first men for some of our others. We we could have won from the age of stars though, so that's possible. But there would have to be an elf again or a fae. But I'm willing to have one more elf or fae, but literally no more other than that because. I'm really keen on having a mixture of races for us all. So, um, there we go. Fay, another one from the Age of Gods. So let's that go. Let's get that one in. And I think we'll definitely have a bit of extra time, folks, to just at least start getting a few ideas of who could be the others before we end stream, and then we'll go into their stories next stream, which I'm really excited to do. Like they're actually de they're deeper lore. It's going to be cool to, to write. Um, Christ has been alive since the time of stars. He's just caught in an eternal time, reliving the experience of losing his husband over and over, maybe a child. Like, well, that could be that could be intriguing. I mean, that's something to think about as well. How long would an elf or a fae live for? Any thoughts, folks, of their lifespans? Because the fact that we've put them in this era, era living well before the first men did just makes them all around more superior and more magical in general they're more in touch with magic than the men of the, these ones are the fourths because 
when you think about it if if the firsts were full of magical energy and were just a hundred percent magical energy that that magic is continuing into the next ages um and it's probably getting less and less but it's still there it's there more in um the elves than it is in the humans it, it it's still there in the men and the beasts but not quite as much as it probably would be in the Alice and Fay, which kind of works when you think about it, when you realise that the firsts are nothing but magical energy. And I think that means that we're going to have a magic world building stream coming up soon, where we get to really talk a bit more about magic in depth. But it's definitely going to probably be heavy, heavily inspired from this. Um... But I think it works having Alex and Faye be more magical beings. And who knows, that they, they definitely could have longer lifespans, potentially. But we talked about this a little bit briefly last stream, that maybe the beast races have a shorter lifespan because they're a little bit more oppressed and naturally they might not live as long because uh, their society and their way of life, life is just much harsher. But humans would i realistically 75 80 years the same as for us on planet earth but then we can be a bit more creative with the other races and have a think about how long they live so um i want to get in on the combo but i'm kind of lost sorry yeah it's it's normal to be lost especially when we get really deep into the world world and st start setting in stone some aspects I, i'm not surprised forgotten depends on what you want the elves to be immortal and die only from being killed or just make them li live like hundreds of years yeah so i mean that's up for talk and discussion for sure but it might it would make sense for them to have a longer lifespan for sure. But immortal, that's a question mark. Maybe their life does eventually come to an end. I imagine so. But they could live they could potentially live for a long time. And may, maybe the older elves that were born very early on in the Age of Gods, more than a modern elf, perhaps have a bit more chance to live longer. Um, maybe as time has gone on lifespans have shortened but who knows that's up for discussion i think they live as long as they feel interesting so that's going to be a world building but yes guys it's going to get it's going to get confusing world building streams can definitely get um very messy with all the thoughts and ideas more than anything really but it's definitely a time to get creative and to add input and talk about cool things even if we if it if it's hard to make it connect and link and clash and might clash with what we're doing it's still cool to weigh up like to different ideas and thoughts um and it's definitely going to be a job to get it all neatly arranged in the law bible for sure so that peeps can follow um, and personally, I'd say it'd be more useful to decide what you want Alice and Faye to represent, what role do you want them to serve in the story you're telling, then have their lifespan reflect that. Yeah, so maybe we keep it a little bit open at the moment, or I'd say right now we can say longer than humans <laughs> as their lifespan. <laughs> They may choose to fade when life becomes less interesting to them or when all their friends have gone. I'm jealous. Be, be, be cool to have the choice of when you go, wouldn't it? But it may, I think it makes sense to have elves have something, and Fae, have something about them that's more magical, like that, where they, they have the power to do something that a human or beast wouldn't be capable of. Um... Because I, I, don't, I don't think that Faye and Al should just be the same as humans, except with more pointy ears. <laughs> they, 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 there's a chance to explore different aspects for sure. Um, and make them really, like, mythical and, and intriguing. Okay, so we was in the middle of filling in the Faye one. Now, this is another day of rest. And this links in with the whole Fae ending with their names with Dar. So. Hannah 
Halliday. And I guess it could be pronounced Hail Day. I did think that at one point could be Hail Day as well. But the point is for it to be Halliday because it's meant to mean holiday. And um, being a day of rest, another day of rest. And we was talking about festivals and holidays in the world. We got a bunch of holidays here. The, th the thought is, my first thought is that all holidays start on the first day of the week um, and it represents holiday or if they're a one day holiday it'll always be on that day holiday ha holiday it's a, it's a little bit of a pun the silly little spin on the word um, and that is w why I wanted their name Twending Da because then it can nicely sound like that um, as well when I talk about this legend so their name isn't going to be Halle spelled like that will think something like that right that's easy easy to pronounce originally that was the idea because it looked pretty cool but it was a bit too confusing to too confusing to pronounce so I think that's probably a good simplified way Okay, so, but these are the only ones I have any name, I, the, the, the name ideas are there for folks, because um, I was thinking of days of rest and holidays and um, how that could all tie into the world, a day of rest and holiday day, and day for holidays. And not necessarily a holiday or fall every time on that day, but whenever there is a holiday, kind of makes it nice and structured for it to start then, seeing as uh, the start of the month, the start of every month will always start with that day as well. Um, and so these other days aren't days of rest, these ones are working days. And... Um, we can think, we can have a good think about how that can work um but yeah we've got the elven elven guy um saw sandar holiday 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 okay so um so you don't have friends to begin with if it's a death sentence for the elves yeah <laughs> and um like, if you have a race that is immortal, why are they immortal? Not in a science sense, not how are they immortal? Why does your narrative need them to be immortal? Is it to explore melancholy that comes with repeated tendium of experience, the same thing over and over? Is it to provide an elder alien mentality for your social commentary? Is it because EA bought you out and it? Yeah. So I'm with you, Zexy. Like, have a reason. I mean, there was, a, there, was a, there was one point, now this was months ago now, that we was um, sort of wondering whether Rose should be made immortal and this wasn't my idea this was another person's idea but it I eventually thought no because as a vampire you know it's easy to think of the immortal trope for a vampire but Rose being so vulnerable and I kind of like to keep her as that vulnerable character as much as possible someone who needs to be protected um, so I don't want to lose that with Rose, I don't want her to become some Mary so that is overpowered um, even with her vampirism so I mean who knows where her arc's going to take, we had a few discussions for potential arcs for Rose um, I mean Violet, oh my goodness, Violet, I've got to remember that's her name <laughs> and um, and uh, and yeah, so, you know, it's nice to think about these things, but then just because you weigh it up, it doesn't mean you, you know, you're going to end up going with it. It can always get changed over time. Um, but it's an interesting concept. Like one of my favourite games, a JRPG called Lost Odyssey, explores the first bit of what you say um, with being an immortal. And also losing all your friends, like all your friends dying while you stay alive. That's pretty sad. A sad thing about being a mortal. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Um, okay, um, so that's filled in. Now, 
this person, I think there should be non-binary. We need the odd non-binary character in with the legends. We'll mix it up with a bit of male, a bit of female, a bit of non-binary, non I think. Um, mix it up in, is the goal. And I think a fae could suit that. Um, so... There was a few there was a little story in mind for this one with with them being fae um and linking with the courage virtue um that interestingly enough where is it on the holidays it's under the fairy kingdom one that and i believe it was met that mentioned this holiday that one lifting day the day their city lifted into the sky so um, I figured this hero, their act of, you know, the act of greatness. Um, it's a good thing to link it to, to to a massive event such as the day the city lifted in the sky. So this this one would have been responsible for the lifting. They saved the kingdom, and lifting day could be the day when that that legend is celebrated for what they did. So um, that really works well for the Fae legend to link to the Fairy Kingdom and the, be the reason why the um, kingdom got lifted in the first place. And we're going to expand on that a bit more next time, I think, and add some extra details. But that's the thought of what could um, have happened. Um, and they would have done that with magic. So mage kind of like fits for them. Um, going with the EA narrative. You think I'd ever do that, Forgotten? Never. <laughs> I'd cry. A lot of this immortality is something a hero seeks because a journey of seeking and falling. F falling into time immortality is where the message is. It's the point to help the reader grapple with the a reality of human mortality. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I think there's an opportunity to explore such themes because this is a big saga and I'm all interested in different, um, in exploring that over the course of different episodes, if there's a relevance. I think keeping the themes as close to knitted as possible in the, in the episodes is a cool thing rather than straying too drastically. Um, Okay, so I think there is way more to fill in for these guys for sure. Um, but that, that we're going to get, get in with the details next time. But before we end today, I want to talk to you guys about thoughts on these other Thor legends because I had more of a blank for these ones. Um, and um, we, I don't have any name ideas or whatsoever for this, but we can always leave the names to last if we want and actually think of their personalities first before we start thinking of names. Because names can be the hard bit, for sure. Um, I find so anyway. Um, but Met did mention a dog character, which I was really... I. I was um, intrigued with having a canine god as a as a beast race god. We want to have the diversity, and I was thinking about this a bit earlier. Anyway, if we look back at this, um, when I think of um, the canine species, I think of them being the kind ones and the ones that want to people please and are friendly and have this acts of service and want belonging and and are a little bit more towards those traits mainly because that's what dogs are like in general so i imagine they could have took on some traits. so i'm thinking a humanity um the virtue of humanity could connect with um the legend that would be the doggo race um more than the others um with it with thinking of the characteristics of dogs and one of our characters who's already in the game binary ferret's character um 
who, if we look through the prior files, a little bit of summary on his character is that he's either friendly and wants to people please, and loyalty and all that, it's all a very, I think shaping that species around those traits is a good starting point that I'm thinking of, because we haven't really considered the canine race much at all. Um, because we haven't got any in the game so far and there's probably not going to be any in episode one um, but they are a race so still need to be considered service dogs like you said yeah and we can do something need to work in dog of our reality yeah so I mean working if we want to make them more of a service dog and doing in it I, I mean if we think of the more evil perspective don't forget some of these gods could have been twisted by certain factions and governments and groups of people for so they can take advantage and and um and uh this god could have had good intentions for sure like be like the humanity dog of really loving their you know tip like dogs love their owners right they're they're the most loyal uh, animals of all so having it connect with the community the humanity of love and kindness feels like a good starting point but if we wanted a group of evil people to twist that god into something else into some kind of dog that makes all their workers work then then that could work as well so um but i think we're interested to make something less people pleasing so dog so the dog character has a god to aspire to yeah so that's just a base like the humanity god it's thinking of all the races as a whole that when i thought of the canine that's the one i particularly thought of um because when we think of other um let's never think of the other races that we've got in the world um i'm gonna just put here for now just carrying on with a question mark because we don't know for sure if we're gonna have them in that slot um the uh justice one for example i think we call a reptile one as well um and when i think of the reptile god i mean this is just an idea at the moment it's all very flexible but i know that the desert's going to be populated with reptiles because we briefly discussed that once with it being an area that's a little bit more oppressed and desert reptiles the setting fits so I could imagine a reptile god in the desert zone, just very early thoughts here, um, more than anywhere else in the world, especially because we already have a god taken at Everbloom Forest, the lake full tree um, is already the monument of that zone. But thinking of where another of other place in the world that's very heavily populated with reptiles, it would be desert, and I was thinking personality wise justice because one in fairness reptiles are the ones that are mistreated the most more than likely so the whole um sort of justice and fairness could work with the reptile early thoughts um feel free to challenge me though um now on to the transcendence one which is an interesting one that is um appreciation of beauty i almost funny enough i was looking at the jungian archetypes and i was thinking the beauty one could link with the jester and pleasure but also the lover and intimacy as well um and especially with the humor the humor made me think of the jester so that that could be more of the the pleasure seeking god i guess but transcendence is an interesting definition because let's have a look so existence it's so spiritual the transcendence one is so it's hard to sort of uh, think of it on a more human level because these legends are very human and are real people they're not like so 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 the transcendence one is a uh, little bit more unusual but i'm trying to see it as more as a of a um of someone who is more uh, like the pleasure seeker just for diversity right because he was quite serious um 
and that works for justice yeah so i'm gonna put their reptile with a question mark because i could not imagine the reptile in any of the others but if that was the case for trans i mean neko the cat people like not the actual cat people the furry furry ones but the ones that look human but uh but have got the ears because they're a little bit more they're a little bit they come across like they could be a bit more cheeky and mischievous and if any are gonna fit the joker um the jester archetype of pleasure and humor and appreciation of beauty maybe it would be them more I don't, I can't imagine the feline would, so, um, and I'm actually very keen on not having any of these gods be human, in all honesty, so I'm actually purposely looking at each of the other races. Now, the moderation, I've left that one till last on purpose, because I had a concept, a thought, with this one, which isn't very heavily set in stone, but I wanted to raise it before we end the stream today. Um, the idea of making one of the gods, um, legends a vampire, but a secret vampire, one that hasn't, that is trying to hide their vampireness, and was the first vampire, the actual first. And the reason why I'm drawn to moderation for that one is because of the, the how difficult it would be for someone who had that virtue to be a vampire. Um, if we look at the moderation, it's all about self-control. Prudence, modesty, self-control. How hard would it be for, for someone who had that virtue to have ended up a vampire? So, um, I think it should like be something that's very under like a secret and nobody really knew about them um and i thought looking at the timeline the age of looking at the ages for these and any points in time where that could have fit the age of stars is what drew me because that was when um the moon, everything changed and everyone thought it was the end of the world and that this person, this legend could have got corrupted when the moon lost its light um, and that might have, that could have been what started the whole vampire thing in the first place. If any, when I think of vampire, like the vampire lore of our game, there's got to be a starting point in time when it all began, right? When it all started. And it's all very vague so far. We, this is all just thoughts. But it, looking at our timeline, this age connects to me as um, when a corruption could have taken place um, and potentially someone, like something could have gone down. Um, but there's a lot of blanks there, so I'm, I'm opening it as a topic for discussion in case anyone's got any thoughts. Um, and it's an intriguing thing because adding a vampire in the group adds a bit of diversity once again to our pantheon um, and you know it's it, it kind of the contrast of the whole moderation one intrigued me so the cat ears race seems good for transcendence and vampire for moderation sounds cool yeah so obviously no, we're not going to just put vampire in because in this world um vampires you can be any race and be a vampire but if we if it's the age of stars it would have to be a fire or elf because beasts and that didn't form at that time i think an elf character could work for that but having no more than um um I think we need to move these up here by the way I'll put them in the wrong box um and an elf that became a vampire so elf vampire but it's a secret like I said I think it's more intriguing I mean it's not 100% we have to set it in stone as a secret but I think it's far more intriguing that they hit their vampirism especially with them being a respected god of moderation and all their virtues were about self-control it would completely ruin them to have given in to their hunger right so that is just first 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 thoughts there um 
and the age of the stars fit with that because of the, the natural disaster of the time of the moon changing and the darkness and kind of that that sort of thing it kind of feels very vampire to me like something could have started that started vampirism up at that time in our world it sort of grabbed me a, a little so um and uh, they hid their vampirism at the time in the act of accepting themselves and learning to still be a good person is what made them a legend or people nowadays don't know that this legend was a vampire see that's a good i'm glad that you mentioned that sexy because that's what we've got to decide what's what the most intriguing sort of arc or story backstory for this god would be out the two now I think the whole they don't know they're a vampire is intriguing that's just my opinion because um if we think about it the world present people fear rose right violet I mean people fear violet so if there was like a vampire actual god that people looked up to and respected then vampire being a vampire in this world shouldn't be feared really it should be something that people um admire even it you know if, if if a god is a vampire and knowingly a vampire it would change everything with how vampires if they, they wouldn't necessarily be feared realistically anymore just imagine if one of the legends was a known vampire people would probably worship vampires commonly so take taking into account the fact that vampires are feared in this world and there's such a mystery about them as well. If we look at Daniel's profile, he's trying to figure out the, the curse, who the first ever vampire was in his profile. Because of things like that, it seems like it fits more with the whole secret concept of um, um, people nowadays don't realize there was ever a vampire. And it gives a bit of an opportunity to explore lore as well and diaries and even the player might not know we might not tell the player <laughs> i mean we know because we're building the world but we we can the hero it doesn't know and neither do people of the world know potentially and it's something it could be a big big massive twist that in the game we realize that this god is actually a vampire and we didn't even know it and it's a revelation for rose to find violet to find now as well so it's an intriguing concept especially you know but I've, let's read chat so and Matt says, so would the first vampire be a vampire? Yes, I guess they would. So maybe we should reword that to vampire elf because I think it sounds better than an elf vampire, doesn't it? But it, I think elf fits more than fae for me for out the two for being a vampire. So that's why I was inclined to choose elf over fae because we can only have one or the other being as in the age of stars, um, no other those were the only two races that existed um because it's very difficult for for it for me to imagine any other period of time being when the first vampire appeared with with all this moon law i think it's a good opportunity to ex to explore that is the point when vampires first came about um so um and and we don't we have a bit of we seem to have filled in a lot of detail with the other ages but not so much with this age of stars so and then it's nice and spread out then we had some in the age of gods some in the age of stars and some in the first men um and um what does transcendence moderation have to do with race is never mind seeing the chart yeah so all the all the that that is is the moral foundation and the virtue it's like the positive trait that the god stands for and the reason why you know people who are respect courageous people will be drawn more to this god for example but it's it's a chance to explore morals and different themes and um things like that in the story as well um for us as the player because in the game we actually have uh, bravery wisdom and um, goodness as a moral scale for our player and that's what three of the legends actually are going to be and what they're going to represent 
Um, does moderation really go with vampires though? Aren't they wanted to be vampires gaining immortality in the first place? Because they're greed. Well, vampires in our world, I'm trying to make them a little bit less uh, cliche. I don't know if that's the word. It's more, they're very much trying to just fight their temptation in this world. It's not about that they're immortal um, or scared of sunlight or anything like that it's it, it, they just have a thirst for blood and they're really trying to fight that desire that's what that's what violet's been shaped around um and um and uh, there is definitely a higher class of vampires as well i mean the daniel character um it definitely comes is classified as more of a higher level vampire and they maybe might be able to fight their thirst a bit better but that, that vampire hierarchy is another thing we'll have to discuss as well at some point. I'm sure we can get deeper and into that lore as well. Um, if he's the first vampire, uh, let's re reread, I'm missing bits. Vampire face sounds like they'd be very scary. And yeah, I mean, the elf sort of, when I'm thinking of elf, I'm thinking elegant and wise and... Uh, you know, all, all that sort of elven thing makes me think of some guy who's very much into self-control and, and um, the traits that moderation stand for, right? Like being a bit of a prude even. Whereas when I think of Faye, I think of more extravagant and more showy. Um, like this this ca character's going to be like, more of an extravagant and showy character and a lot more lively. Whereas elves are probably a bit more reserved and I think that kind of fits the moderation. But yeah, vampires in this world can be of any race and I think that's an intriguing link as well because we can have all sorts of people in the world over time. Different vampires of different races. And Van says, back then, if they were the first, they wouldn't have known what vampire was. There was in a culture or society based around it. Yeah, so yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's all a big mystery. So nobody knows what they were. That If they have any powers, like if it turns out immortality is something we want to explore with vampires, it would have been a absolutely nobody would have even known that was possible back then anyway so i imagine this vampire elf when this happened if they if this all happened if they were an ordinary person before the moon changed and this is what turned them and corrupted them the change of the moon then it, it would have been a shock to them especially if they were this real self person who has real self-control and is like super you know like can withhold their uh, desires basically the opposite of the transcendent one who's more into ple pleasures and and be the beauties of the world and the, this guy is the opposite of the neko probably so um so so yeah it's gonna be tough you'd be how would someone like that cope i think the whole f being able to the whole character that's trying to fight something is so different too is an interesting thing to explore and because it parallels with rose as well i mean violet keep getting the name wrong because rose has been renamed to violet um so it sort of parallels what we're sort of building with violet's character with her being this um animalistic farm girl who who is good has a really good heart but can't help but get thirsty from time to time and want to kill things but he's desperately fighting that and wants to develop self-control that we had a talk about that during violet's character arc stream several weeks back and it was really fun um and i feel like this is really works well with that and it's an interesting chance for her to 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 sort of go with her character arc and explore so um i definitely considering all those things it definitely felt like a really cool thing to have one of the six legends be a vampire because then it's just a shock when it when it all comes out that um they were actually a vampire <laughs> this this 
this admired person ended up being a vampire for most of their life and struggled and fought against it anyway let's catch up with chat so off the top of my head if it's if it is a secret that their vampire needs to play a part in the modern day story his self-hatred mir mirrors violet so violet learning the truth about this god plays a narrative role in violet's acceptance of herself and the good ending yeah exactly what i was saying just even before i read what sexy said right so that's exactly what i'm imagining Zex, it seems like we're like-minded here with this. As I said a little bit earlier in stream, all these six legends, really? It'd be even more awesome if each of these characters paralleled other characters in the story in some way, and a way to challenge them and their beliefs even as we progress. Um, inserting them into the story as much as possible i think is a cool thing to do rather than have them be just empty pointless background information i, I see it as an opportunity to explore morals and sort of challenge ourselves and, and, and explore different themes as well so which is why i'm so heavily focused on this whole virtue moral, moral foundation thing and having them all represent positive traits of humanity each of these legends um and i like the idea of making an evil version of them as well that isn't their truth but someone has twisted like a bad faction or whatever as well because Somebody could easily turn something like Transcend, like the the Neko one, if they're the more jester type of character that are more about pleasures, they could have, they could turn that into something really selfish and gluttonous and and like really promiscuous and really deep down it wasn't about that and who knows. Um, and uh, in Violet's background, it was a due, due, due to a curse. Yeah, so that's just a brief summary. That the vampire law is still very vague, really. We haven't really spent much time. Oh my God, I've got to go. <laughs> I've got carried away talking and it's my dinner. Damn it. Um, so unfortunately, I have to put a stop to the stream now, but I want to catch up with chat before I go. What am I like when it comes to world building? Um, I think that modern modern world uh, might think they were cursed by it, unaware of the real history. Um, yeah, so that's something to think about, folks. Feel free to give me your thoughts on Discord, um, and um, we'll carry on with this discussion into the next stream. Because as as expected as today, we've only got the really vague bits filled in today, and just a few ideas thrown about. And we haven't set ourselves on the gender for these characters yet, but obviously they're going to be a mix of male and female. We've already got a non-binary character, which is great. Um, so we'll make sure that we mix it up. I can see this person being a male, personally. I just picture that. I like the idea of the Neko being female. Maybe, I mean, I'm going to put question marks for now because we're not going to set in stone. I love the idea of a female reptile, especially because we haven't got a female reptile in the game just yet. Maybe a male canine. Um, so, we'll see. I've just put question marks. We might have a change of heart and one of you guys might actually think, actually, no, the suit that with a gender might have a valid point. So, um, question marks there for now. Um, and we'll fill in more information, we'll fill in their stories and their background, what their life was like and what they actually did that was special, their act of greatness. And I already gave a little bit brief overview that my thoughts on this Fae character was that they were part of the lifting of the city. So that's, they were involved in that and um, which goes on to become lifting day in the calendar. Um, and but as for what the others did, I mean, this guy here who sort of filled out the healer guy, um, there's some thoughts on that one as well. But as for the others, we don't don't know what their act of greatness is going to be. So that's going to be a fun thing to talk about together next stream. So I have rambled on and I've got knocked on the door because my dinner's ready. So um, uh, 
and hitting the same points because you're brilliant. Yeah, see you first, have a good one. Yeah, well, you know this would be a long stream. Yeah, that, thanks, guys. I mean, no trivia or red today because I do have to rush off, which is unfortunate. But I'm going to definitely reread what you guys have said in the VOD because there's been a few interesting points raised that I don't want to forget. So um, we'll car literally just carry on from when we've, where we've left off on Thursday, but just get deeper into the details. Um, and it'll, we'll, we'll need to start thinking of some cool names, but I'm happy to save the, the names for the days and the characters for last once we've thought their personalities. The only reason why I've already got them for these is because I wanted to be clever and have a pun for the your day, <laughs> the holiday. So it'd be cool if we did a similar thing and followed the pattern for the others, but it can be tough to think of that. They don't always come easy, but when you like think of one, it's like, yeah, we gotta have it because that's too good. But it, it's always a little bit of a challenge to come with them on the spot. They sometimes come a bit after, don't they? So we can always say the days and names to last, but think of the actual, um, you know, these, the story first. Right, I'm gonna have to go, my dude is probably getting cold. And remember to put Age of Stars for the vampire, yeah. So let's get that in now, just very quickly before I go. And that was 8,000 years ago. So I do, re I am very into the idea of it being the Age of Stars as well, because it, it nicely, it, 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 it's someone in between the two eras then, because we've already got two in the Age of Gods, and I'm sure the others are all the Age of the First Men, so it's nice to have at least one be in the era in between. And it just perfectly links in with the moon. And if anyone has any thoughts about the moon law, in any way we can link that into vampirism feel free to say because i think there's a lot of potential there because the world totally people totally would have thought the world would have ended and there would have been a lot of mess that would have happened in that period of time i'm sure it feels like the perfect spot for vampirism to have come about um so yeah cool awesome folks um all very messy and lots of blanks for now, but we'll fill it in next time. Thank you, Estrella. Vampire was star in the internet. That's very true as well. So we will add. Yeah, I've got to go now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm getting really cold. I've got to head. <laughs> Bye.